three Stuart steam plants mounting a gas burner. Part 14, fitting the first Bix gas burner to a Stuart 501 boiler base plate. This is a short title for a short video. I need to drill some holes in the base plate and some holes in the burner, which will be threaded, to make it possible to attach the burner to the base plate. I think the easiest way to do this job is to use the burner itself as a template and just draw around it. Then I can measure the resultant lines to make sure they're in the right place. I need the venturi of the gas burner to exit at the chimney end. And the best position for the burner is underneath the majority of the tubes. Here I'm just experimenting. This Bix burner has a longer than normal venturi tube, which means that the primary air inlet holes will be outside the boiler casing. This I think is the best method, having them outside the boiler casing, because there's less CO2 outside the boiler casing. That is of course carbon dioxide and I don't want the venturi tubes to be in a carbon dioxide environment. Also if the venturi is inside the casing it's possible for the venturi holes to catch fire because of course there is gas in a venturi and ideally this needs keeping away from the burner's heat source. By a system of using a steel rule to measure and adjust the position of the burner all I had to do, as you've just seen, is draw around it with a felt tip pen. Initially the plan was to drill three holes to mount the burner, but I decided that two would be sufficient. But I drilled the third hole anyway. This is a Proxon TBM220 drilling machine. It's very useful, it's quite small, not all that powerful, but more than adequate for doing jobs like this. And because it isn't as powerful as the drilling machine in the main workshop, there's less chance of it either snapping the drills off or spinning the work. If you're going to buy one of these, check the prices. A TBM220 is quite different from another model that they make, which is twice the price, and the only difference I can see is the fact is it has a chuck like the one you see on my TBM220, which I bought as a separate unit, and it wasn't very expensive. It's very important once you've drilled holes in pieces of metal to deburr them and here I'm doing just that. You've seen this before many times in my videos. I just use a large twist drill, it's a very quick and easy way to do it. In this clip I'm drilling the third hole which was completely unnecessary. But at the time I did think it was a good idea. I will not be doing it on the other two mounting plates. After drilling the centre hole I turned the whole plate around to drill the hole at the other end. This drill bit is a 964 drill bit, which is a clearance size for 4BA, and I'm going to use 5BA bolts, so it just gives me a little bit more tolerance after I've drilled the holes in the base of the burner. To mark the hole positions on the base of the burner, I just used a scriber through the holes on the bed plate. Then using a ruler, I double checked the measurements to make sure they were in the middle. I never realised that these Bix burners were made from steel. Hard steel as well. I did think they were made from brass. I was a bit concerned about damaging the ceramic. And I was a bit puzzled why the ceramic appeared to be quite loose in the burner. When I looked at it closer, there wasn't much adhesive. And it was still sticky. Was that because this burner's only just been made? I don't know. But anyway, it didn't break, that was the main thing. You have to be quite gentle with things like this because they are a little bit delicate. When I looked at the ceramic after the drilling operation, it was perfectly fine. So I went ahead and threaded the holes in the burner 5BA using a 5BA tap. First at one end and then the other. I'm pretty sure that this should be sufficient to hold this burner in place. This, by the way, is a high-speed steel 5BA tap, and it's really good to use, and it doesn't feel like it's going to break, which is what usually happens sometimes with carbon steel taps. I think high-speed steel taps are much better. 
What I'm doing here is using a twist drill to countersink the holes to take a pair of 5BA brass countersunk machine screws. Why didn't I use a countersink, you may be wondering. Well, they are up in the main workshop and I am down in the smaller workshop built onto the house. And besides, it was raining outside. It all worked out in the end and I screwed the burner to the boiler mounting plate. Before final assembly, after the painting, I will be using some Loctite 542 as a thread sealant, just to make sure none of the gas leaks out. As you can clearly see in this clip, two bolts are more than adequate to hold the burner to the mounting plate. When I make the next two plates, which I won't be videoing, I will leave out the centre hole. With the first of the 501 boilers sat on the base plate, you can see that the Venturi is in a very good place outside the boiler. And that's it for this one. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.